howl of the wolf is a haunting sound. Even today, it still raises the most primal fears. A howling wolf invites its own death sentence. In most Western European countries, it has been relentlessly hunted down. But in northern Spain, the wolf has slipped through the noose of extinction. Here, often within sight of the tiny villages, wolves continue to prowl through the mountains. Unpredictable and elusive, they are true predators, caught in the heart of a controversy. Northern Spain is a far cry from the Sunshine Coasts. Storms from the Atlantic bring snow to its rugged limestone mountains. It's a wilderness where European vultures still fly ever watchful for the remains of a kill. Wolves still exist in these lonely mountains, but amazingly, they also live within sight of Spain's northern beaches. Further inland, villagers fear and hate wolves. In the 1970s, there was a rumor of a child being attacked in this village near Arenci. Attacks on children are rare, but sheep, cattle and goats are regularly killed. Farmers are convinced it's the work of wolves. Although wild dogs are often the culprits, it's the wolf that gets the blame. Now it is in the thick of a fight about compensation for the damage. These two shepherds lost more than 50 sheep and 30 more were injured near Toro, north of Salamanca. In Europe, hatred of wolves goes way back to the times when they massacred flocks of sheep and made men poor overnight. Archive scenes from Yugoslavia show that even in quite recent days, dogs were trained to fight wolves to the death. Hunters made a living trapping and poisoning wolves. The corpses were paraded through the village. Every family was obliged to give food and wine in return for being rid of the killers. The wolf has haunted people's dreams and imagination for thousands of years. It still lurks in the back of European minds as a dark, distant terror. In Spain, the fear remains a reality. It's a country which still has wild and unspoiled places, echoes of an older Europe, where mules and donkeys are used as draft animals, and herdsmen accompany their stock in all seasons. Felipe Barcena is the Count of Torresedera and one of Spain's wolf specialists. <laughs> 
He has devoted his life to studying wolves and has collected the bodies of several hundred killed in Galicia. Spanish or Iberian wolves are a separate race, unlike their American relatives. They have characteristic dark markings on the front legs. Compared with domestic dogs, the wolf is a powerful predator with strong teeth and jaws. It may even kill stray dogs and help rid the farmers of these potential sheep killers. A mature male Spanish wolf can measure six feet from nose to tail. This one was shot after attacking a small horse. Wolves have fascinated Barsenia since childhood, but even he has only ever caught the most fleeting glimpses of them in the wild. Hounded by man, the last wolves have learned to move like shadows. Spanish biologists, like Guillermo Palomero, have to rely on one of the few things that even wolves cannot always hide. I think these are wolf tracks. It's very difficult to distinguish wolf tracks from dogs. Many studies have been made on the tracks of wolves and dogs, and no significant differences have been found. But from my experience, these tracks here are wolves. A wolf track is larger than a dog's, up to four inches across, and it's one of the very few clues that this evasive animal gives of its whereabouts. In the Cantabrian mountains, a carcass of a donkey provides a golden eagle with a welcome meal. Scavenging ravens mob the eagle in an attempt to drive it away. These birds of ill omen will also try to steal food from wolves at a kill. to grab what it can. are sometimes killed by eagles if they're not careful. But something more fearsome has made the eagle nervous. The chamois feel its presence too. are returning for the carcass. They are very cautious out in the open, even though they left the kill only a few hours ago. They've had to be wary to survive. Generally, wolves are shot on sight in Spain. Three wolves together is remarkable. This is probably a pair with one of last year's young. Except in a few places, big packs find it hard to exist because of lack of large prey. Poisoning and hunting have taken their toll too. Wolves were once the most widely distributed and dominant predators in Europe. Now they're up against the wall. The slightest noise may be the prelude to a rifle shot, and they're constantly alert for any sound or the slightest whiff of danger. An 
eagle is no threat. Eventually, having gorged themselves, the wolves take off. They're territorial animals and mark their ground in two ways, by howling and by scent marking. Scent is probably a wolf's greatest source of information. It can tell whether another wolf, a fox, a dog, or human has passed recently by smell alone. It can also detect someone approaching long before they're within eyesight. To find out more about the elusive wolf, scientists have started to trap and radio collar their quarry. In this way, they can follow their every move with a receiver. Each wolf sends out a different radio signal, so their daily travels can be plotted. After months of work, the scientists have discovered that many wolves have become loners. Some travel 20 miles a night, often without pausing. Perhaps the most surprising thing is that wolves can exist undetected while living so close to man. This female brought up a litter of cubs just a few hundred yards from a village. This wolf has evaded every attempt to catch it. In the early mornings, when no one is around, a wolf hunts in the fields near a village. It'll grab a mouse if it can't find anything larger. Nothing is too small for this opportunistic predator. Deer are a wolf's natural prey. They're difficult to come by because humans hunt them too. But there are still hares and rabbits to catch. Anything left over is buried. The wolf will remember where it has hidden it and returns when it's hungry to dig it up again.
Even solitary wolves seek the company of others at mating time. calls sent into the vast emptiness of the wild. It can help assemble a pack before hunting or express solidarity against rivals. The eerie song of the wolf carries far and wide, often over 30 square miles. In modern Spain, the isolated groups seldom get an answer. Howling also bonds the pack members together, but at close quarters, their main form of communication is by the expressions on their faces. What looks like a snarl can be more of a smile to them. During the mating season, even a sideways glance between rival males may be taken as a threat. The males challenge each other for pack leadership. They show submission by holding their tails between their legs and their bodies low to the ground. An aggressive male will raise his tail to display his dominance. Their huge fangs bared within inches of each other's throats and vital organs. The subordinate animal on the left shows his teeth in a fearful grin of appeasement. Both males and females establish their own hierarchies. To human eyes, these are terrifying expressions, but they serve their own special purpose. Fighting seldom erupts into violence. Ritualized moves inhibit bloodshed. If an animal submits, he or she is unlikely to be badly attacked. Eventually, one male and female push their way to the top, and a semi-amicable truce sets in. When the dominant male senses that the dominant female is receptive, he moves in to father the next generation. Like dogs, wolves couple for up to half an hour. The pair can only snarl at anyone who gets too close for comfort. In nine weeks, the cubs will be born. But first, a safe place to have them must be found, away from the prying eyes of humans. Spanish shepherds are always on the move, searching for new grass for their flocks. They often travel a thousand miles in a season. In summer, they head for high mountain pasture to avoid the parching heat in the valleys below. But they're driving their sheep into wolf territory. Lambs born along the way must not straggle behind. Though shepherds catch glimpses of them during the day, 
It's at night that the wolves make their move. It is usually when sheep are unguarded that wolves are tempted to kill them. It doesn't happen frequently, despite what shepherds believe. On average, each wolf in Spain accounts for only a couple of sheep a year. They prefer natural prey. A wild boar has fallen to the pack. They feed fast, squabbling only when they get to the last few bones. Wild animals are the major part of a wolf's diet. But when natural prey grows scarce, survival is all that counts. The northern mountains of Spain once had a thriving population of wolves, which constantly preyed on domestic stock. Before guns were widely available, most villages built traps to kill the raiding wolves. Beaters drove them towards stockades that ended in stone pitfalls. The animals were pushed along the valley towards the V-shaped trap. In 1946, when this forest ranger was 13, he took part in the last wolf hunt here, stationed in one of the pointed wooden hides. The wolves found themselves caught between the fences and funneled past the hides. Then they were driven over the 15-foot drop into the stone trap. The ranger recalls the final hunt. The image of a wolf as a killer is still very much alive in people's minds in rural Spain. As this rare film shows, even in the 1960s, it was not unknown for a wolf to attack a flock of sheep in broad daylight. In all likelihood, this was a young, inexperienced wolf, or a she-wolf desperate to feed her cubs. The shepherd didn't have an effective sheepdog and wasn't armed. Eventually, the wolf retreated. It's exceptional incidents like this that become embedded in people's memories. The fear remains. Also in living memory, there have been reports of attacks on children in Spain. Very few have been confirmed. In Galicia, wolves exist largely on refuse and waste from chicken farms. In 1975, a wolf seized a child playing alone in a garden. An old man who was nearby and the victim recall the incident. He dragged him to that wall over there. The child was screaming, and when his grandfather realized, he yelled at the wolf with his fists like this. The boy's grandfather managed to throw a hand scythe at the wolf as it dragged the boy along the field, and it finally dropped him. The victim was three years old at the time. Now 18, he tells what happened. I was told to stay here on the path, but I went down into the garden. I could see a wolf coming along. He jumped over the wall as I was sitting there playing. That's when he grabbed me by the leg, and as you can see, I still have the scars today. Photographs taken at the time show he narrowly escaped. It took him a month to recover. Subsequently, five wolves were shot or poisoned, one of them a female with cubs near to starvation. To put the reports in perspective, there have been only two deaths definitely caused by wolves this century in Spain, both unattended children. 
This is far less than the several hundred deaths attributed to attacks by dogs in the same period. But it's the dark, primal fear of wolves that still captures the headlines. A wolf is strong enough to kill a human if it wanted to. The fact is, wolves don't. It is they who fear people. In a rocky cave, a she-wolf has a litter of cubs. They're just three days old. Female wolves are adaptable animals and have been known to rear young in a ditch, a patch of heather, or simply in a stand of long grass. But wherever the cubs are born, they must be well hidden. They're blind and helpless at birth. They're about a pound in weight and drink half a pint of milk a day. Wolves are devoted mothers. She won't leave her tiny cubs for the first few days. Eventually, thirst drives her out to find water. It's a dangerous time. If a suckling mother is spotted leaving her den, the chances are that the local shepherd will hear about it. generations of struggle against the wolf, no shepherd will think twice about destroying a litter in areas where he's allowed to do so. Even if the mother returns now, she won't attack. Her fear of humans is stronger than her instinct to save her family. In the past, some cubs were beaten to death in their dens. Others were taken and shown round the village, and money was collected. Most eventually starved to death. Today, the authorities require that cubs should be put down humanely, but this isn't always the case. Taking the lives of cubs without a license has been illegal for the last 20 years, but many country people still detest the wolf enough to kill it before it has a chance to destroy anything of theirs. Killing adult wolves also needs a permit. They are a protected game species. But in the more remote corners of the mountains, indiscriminate persecution still continues. On a trail regularly used by wolves, an illegal steel-jawed trap is set. These brutal traps are indiscriminate and catch anything that passes, including the seldom-seen Spanish bear. This mother probably gnawed her foot off to escape from a trap or a snare. The amazing thing is that she has managed to raise two cubs. Bears once ranged all over northern Spain. Now there are just 80 left in the Cantabrian mountains. 
While this film was being made, a female was killed by a poacher who offered her skin for sale. The police heard about it and raided his house to find these bear cubs. They're being looked after by a nature protection society, but their future is bleak. There's little chance of returning them to the wild because they will lack the basic survival skills that they should have learned from their mother. Brown bears are on the point of dying out forever in Spain. They're being killed for raiding beehives and taking foals. When fully grown, they're fearsome and powerful predators, and the local people are afraid of them. One day soon, both the Spanish bear and wolf could face the same fate. Just a few individuals locked up in a zoo. Like bears, wolves were poisoned in huge numbers. Until recently, the number of survivors wasn't known. But a new survey has helped make more accurate estimates. Scientists visited more than a thousand of Spain's most remote villages, interviewing locals for important clues. This particular day was a fiesta, and they were rounding up the sheep to pen them in for the day. At the bar, there are plenty of stories about wolves that howl in the surrounding hills. The first thing is to get reliable eyewitness accounts. This farmer came face to face with five wolves when he was out looking for some cows he'd lost. They stared at him for a while and then took off into the woods. His sighting will be cross-checked against reports from nearby villages. This helps cut down the exaggeration which inevitably creeps in. The best time of year for accurate information is the time when the young wolf cubs are beginning to move around but haven't yet learned to keep hidden. The farmer also saw cubs in a wood just above the village. Wherever a wolf family was reported, the team would try to investigate it. They came across plenty of tales, but above all, great resentment that compensation was not paid for the damage that wolves do. But a dramatic picture was beginning to emerge. The Spanish wolf is re-establishing itself in areas from which it was once banished. Wolves are on the increase, and their reappearance is causing dismay among shepherds who want to exterminate these new settlers. I don't want to see a single one. I would swear it to General Franco himself if he were to rise from the dead. All those wretched wolves that roam around, I don't want them. Last year, when I saw them at Fuente del Obispo, I was so frightened, my heart rose up in my throat. <laughs> In the wheat fields of the central meseta of northern Spain, there are far fewer livestock, and most are better protected. There is not much cover, and there are no large game animals. This is not the best place to look for wolves. But a new colony of wolves has returned to the region and have a litter of month-old cubs. Their parents are taking the young to a new area. They are extremely nervous, and the slightest disturbance around their den is enough to make them move to a safer hideout. 
It's the first long journey for the cubs. The field must seem like a prairie. And they're hungry, but the adults try to keep them moving. They're vulnerable out in the open. There are ten cubs in the litter, something that has only once been recorded before in Spain. Incredibly, this litter was born a few miles from a major city. There are few roe deer and wild boar here, and domestic stock is too well protected, so the wolves have to be flexible in their hunting. As much as half of the diet of this powerful predator can be smaller animals, like hares and rabbits. Food is brought back in their mother's stomach and regurgitated. When a cub wants food, it jumps up and licks its mother's muzzle. It's trying to find out what she's eaten and whether there's any left. Later, as adults, the cubs will use this gesture to show submission. The youngsters also check out the pack males, who eventually tire of them if they do not have any food to give. The female is protective and makes sure that the other adults, even males, don't steal the cub's food. The cubs establish who's dominant and who's submissive. In the process, they form strong emotional bonds with each other and the adults. This is the side of the wolf anyone can identify with. Powerful emotional attachments, lasting family ties, and complex patterns of communication. But the subtleties of a wolf's family life are not widely appreciated in the Spanish countryside. By 1970, the war waged against wolves reduced their numbers to a few hundred. But then a new law banned the use of poisons, and the wolf began to recover. There may now be as many as 2,000 wolves in Spain, the best population in Western Europe. But the war is by no means over. This family was later wiped out by poachers. Today's wolves turn up in unexpected places. The urban fox is already well established here, but no one's frightened of foxes. A wolf scavenging the garbage dumps in Spanish towns is a different matter. In areas where the wolf has reappeared, the farmers are being encouraged by game wardens to turn to man's best friend for help. This is one of the mastines that has been bred in the farm we have. This is a typical Spanish uh, race of dog used for, by shepherds to protect the, the cattle from wolves. So we give them to the shepherds, they are free, and mainly in, in territories where wolf is a problem. And well, they have very good success. <coughs> The Spanish Mastine is an ancient breed of wolf dog, about twice the size of a German shepherd. With a spiked collar to guard its throat, it can keep wolves at bay. In some places, shepherds have always kept Mastines. They also keep away stray dogs and poachers. But in other regions, stockmen cannot be bothered to keep these large, boisterous, and hungry sheepdogs, so their flocks graze unguarded. And this invites trouble, particularly where there are young wolves. By the end of the winter, the cubs are well-grown and now alone. They may have split up from their family, or their parents have been killed. In quiet, isolated regions, the young explore their surroundings. They're playful and hungry, too.
the young wolves have to learn what's good to eat and what isn't. The toad has warts on its body that exude foul, toxic chemicals. One of the young wolves has got a nasty mouthful. It'll recover, lesson learned. Wolves do kill sheep, but they'll also scavenge off any carcass they find. In regions where farming methods are traditional, many domestic animals die from natural causes. All too often, these deaths are attributed to wolves. Vultures, which still occur in good numbers in Spain, survive by picking up the corpses. So why not the scavenging wolves? If a rancher comes across a scene like this, his immediate reaction is to blame the wolf. In almost every case, it is probably death from disease or the work of wild dogs. This farmer, who lives close to Madrid, shot a feral dog as it tried to catch one of his sheep by the throat. He estimates that in two years, dogs have cost him $8,000 in lost stock. Biologists believe that overall, dogs probably cause many hundred times more damage. But the wolf, still gets the blame. Whenever a corpse is discovered, game wardens come in to investigate. In this case, the wounds do look like the work of wolves, and compensation will be paid. A new pack has been active in the hills and is preying consistently on cattle. And before local farmers take the law into their own hands, the wardens organize an official hunt. A single wolf is shot. For the wolves of Spain as a whole, this is probably the lesser of two evils. Twenty years ago, they were almost wiped out with poison. Now at least only a few problem animals are removed, and the hunting diffuses the farmer's anger. In years gone by, villagers would have spat and thrown stones at a dead wolf. Now they gather around to see and touch this seldom seen animal. Many people find the killing of wolves abhorrent. In general, biologists and game wardens think the wolf can survive limited local hunting. When I am alone, I'm thinking that poor wolf, maybe we are working with a species that we don't know if we'll survive to human progress. But reality shows you that there's a problem. There are attacks on cattle, and you, you have to allow some hunting. In the Cantabrian mountains, the situation is fairly stable. But in other regions of Spain, there is still enormous resentment. Although there is a system of compensation, it is not implemented by many of the regional governments. 
In Galicia, where one quarter of the damage is done, 99% is never paid for. When farmers are not compensated, they hunt the wolf. However, this is at least better than reverting to poison. Many of the hunts are little more than a ritual walking of the hills with almost a carnival atmosphere. To ensure the wolf's survival in Spain, the compensation problem must be solved. Also a means of diverting the wolf's attention from domestic stock is urgently needed. One way is to make sure that there are plenty of roe deer and other natural quarry available. Once deer were heavily hunted. Now villagers are drifting away to work in the towns, they may recover. Wild boar are an important, if formidable, prey species too. If there are deer and boar to hunt, and stock is better shepherded and guarded, then the wolf will melt back unnoticed into the landscape. In urban Spain, public opinion is more favorable towards the wolf. Outside the cities, attitudes still have to change. In fact, they must change if this unique population of wolves is going to survive. The European community is considering helping in this process with funds for wolf conservation. If damages were paid, it might win over the stock ranchers and shepherds. It is possible for wolves to live in areas inhabited by man. The question is, Will man let his ancient enemy live with him?